Hello my loves, how are you doing? I hope you're doing good. Today I thought it would be really fun to chat about the 10 series I have to finish this year. It won't be a flop. I'm confident. No, the truth is. Kind of my top series TBR for this year. As many of you know, probably my biggest reading goal this year is to finish more series. I am a like serial series starter. Oh, serial series starter. That could go on merch. Serial series starter. No one copied me, I've trademarked it. <laughs> my mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. I would constantly start series and I have a lot of series on my TBR where I've read the first book and I have not read any more. So a big goal this year is to finish a lot of them. And these are the 10 series I really wanna prioritize getting done. I'm hoping by the end of the year, these are all pretty much gonna be finished. I've got plans for some of them. So yeah, I, I'm feeling good about this goal so far, actually. I, I think I started the year on like 46 or like something like that, 45, 46 series on my TBR. I'm actually down to 35. So I only have to finish nine to get to my series of only being in the middle of 26 series max by the end of the year. Now I am gonna start some more series this year. I haven't yet, but being realistic, I, pro I probably will start a few more. Like, <laughs> well, a few. I've contained myself thus far, but I probably will start a few more, but I'm feeling good. So even if I were to like start no more series and just finish these 10, I would reach my goal. Okay, so first is the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. So I only have the next one. I don't have the third one in the trilogy. I've read Assassin's Apprentice and Royal Assassin is what I need to read next. Now listen, they're big boys, this series, and Robin Hobb is like really in-depth fantasy, really in-depth fantasy. Girly, listen, she's a bit intimidating. She's a bit intimidating. <laughs> Basically, we're following Fitz, who is the bastard son of the guy who was the prince in waiting and he kind of gets raised within the royal court and the king figures out that he's in a unique position to basically access royal spaces without being part of the royal family so he gets trained as a royal assassin. I really really liked Assassin's Apprentice, I gave it four stars and I would just really like to finish this trilogy this year so that maybe I could start the live ship series next year. I've heard that like Mad Ship and I think the second one in, the, in that trilogy, what is that called? Oh yeah, the Mad Ship Ship is the second one. We have Ship of Magic first. I've heard Mad Ship is like a lot of people's favorite Robin Hobb books. So I'm really excited to get to that trilogy, but I feel like maybe one of Robin Hobb's trilogies every two years is like a realistic goal. So I started this one uh, in 2021. So finishing it in 2022 and having 2023 and 2024 to read the next one. Oh my God, my life, who knows what my life is gonna be like in 2024, who knows? Um, Who knows? Who knows, who knows, who knows? I really, really like Robin Hobb's writing, world building, and I definitely wanna get deeper into this whole world that Robin Hobb has going on. But I think it's important for me to put, there's a lot of like fantasy. Are this Is this all fantasy? Oh my God, this is, this could, all of these series could be classed as fantasy. <laughs> um, I think I put these on here because they're some of the more like intimidating ones for me to get to. Also with, I mean, most series are fantasy, let's be honest, but with a lot of my mystery series, they're longer things that I'm not predicting to finish this year, like my Urku Poirot series that I'm reading, or the Lady Hardcastle series, like there, there, there are a lot of books, so I'm not predicting to finish them. Whereas I have a lot of fantasy series that all the books are already out, so I can get to them. Oh my God, I didn't realize this was all fantasy, what the hell? Next is The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stewwater. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I have all of the books. I think this will be a series that I read within the next couple months. I didn't love The Raven Boys. I gave it three stars. To me, it felt like it was setting up the whole rest of the series. Do you know what I mean? It felt like a prequel. It didn't feel like necessarily a book in its own right. So that's why, although I only gave it like a three star, I am excited to get into the rest of the series. But I really, I don't know what to expect from it. I'm hoping it's gonna get even more fantastical, kind of crazy, but I wanna get attached to the characters and I haven't really done that yet but it's such like a staple fantasy series that so many people love that is kind of like close to a lot of people's hearts that I really do want to finish it and I don't want to be in the middle of it any longer I just want to like get it done and know what my opinion of it is if that makes sense because I'm kind of nervous I'm kind of like a little bit scared but obviously Kayla loves this series that's why I picked it up in the first place I think I want to get rid of some of the older series pr like predominantly on my TBR so that it's more like current series that I'm reading so for her, okay, baby. bye. Then we have, oh my god, I'm actually weak trying to hold these up. The Poppy War by I.F. Kwang. Now listen, I'm fucking terrified. I don't know why, but I don't think any books terrify me like these do. R.F. Kwang terrifies me. They're big. 
They're massive. I mean, they're, they're, they're very big. This is so big. It's mind boggling. I read The Poppy War in 2020. It's been a long time. And these are some of my like, whenever I do like, oh my God, the list I'm gonna do, like this one, books I'm gonna read. I always put them on here and then I never read them, but I'm gonna force myself to do so this year. It's on the list. It's on It's on the uh, the plans for this year. So obviously in this we're following Rin who goes to like this military training academy and the poppy war begins and yada yada yada. I don't want to say too much more because I don't want to spoil anything. R. F. Kwang's next book, Babel, is coming out this year and like honestly, who am I? Who am I to like pick that up? And be so I mean, I've pre-ordered it. Who am I to do that if I don't finish this series? Genuinely, my dad has read them all. He like loves them. <laughs> he read them all before me, so it's time. But I'm just scared by how long they are. And the thing is, I don't like the audiobook narrator. Not anything personal, just doesn't, I just don't like her audiobooks, don't know why. Um, so I can't even listen to the audiobook to get me through it quicker, so I'm gonna have to read it all physically. That's not me anymore. Every book now I have to like have the audiobook. <laughs> I'm fashion, I'm style. And if they can't keep up, then that's their problem. Bye, Bye. take Thank care. You so much. Then we have, I don't know what this series is called. Is it just called the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor? This is another one where I've read the first one and I gave it three stars. And I kind of just want to finish the rest of the series to figure out what I think of it. I really love Lady Taylor's writing, but I just, I just found the plot and the insta love and the romance in Daughter of Smoke and Bone it wasn't for me. It wasn't really for me. I am, I'm nervous to get into this, but I really love her writing. So I do definitely just want to finish the series off. I have, again, both of the books now. It should be pretty easy to finish off, but I think I'm going to finish something else for me, Taylor, first. We'll get into that in a second. And then next is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. This is a middle grade horror series that Catherine Arden does. And I listen to the audiobooks of these. What is my hair doing? That's on the wrong side. Excuse me. That's very rude, isn't it? As many of you know, Catherine Arden, one of my favourite authors ever with the Fair and the Nightingale series. And I don't like love this series, this horror series. Like it's fine. It's like middle grade, pretty young middle grade, pretty short middle grade. So I'm not like obsessed, <laughs> but I do really, really want to finish it. I have the next audiobook, which is Dark Waters. And then the last in the series comes out in August, which is Empty Smiles. And this is just a series that I've really like put effort into finishing this year. I'm going to put effort into finishing this year because it's easy. Like it's like four hour long audiobooks and I listened to it sped up obviously so it's like two hours of my time to finish this series so it's like a really easy one to tick off the list. I have a lot of middle grade on my series list where I've literally only read the first one and I don't read a lot of middle grade so I feel like I really need to prioritize some of the middle grade ones I have. I remember oh my god you guys I did a video two summers ago <laughs> in 2020 like reading middle grade for the first time where I started three different middle grade series and I have not read a single book in any of those series again even though I really enjoyed them it's just something I've struggled to fit into vlogs so the first five are all ones I have multiple books to read in the series before I finish it but the second five are all ones that I only have one book left be it because they're duologies or because I've read the other books in the series and I decided to do this because I feel like it's realistic like let's be realistic if I'm putting like fucking like long series on here it's not gonna happen whereas if I only have to read one book to finish a lot of these series off it's much much more likely to happen and like you know 2022 is all about being kind to myself and being realistic so that's what we're doing. One of my favorite series that I'm so excited to finish is the Girls of Paper and Fire series by Natasha Niang. We have the final one, which is Girls of Fate and Fury. This came out in like November of last year. So it hasn't been out for super long, but I'm scared. I'm really scared because I feel like Natasha Niang is just gonna kill everyone. Like everyone's gonna die. No one's safe. <sighs> yeah. That's your fault. <laughs> But this is like a fantasy series where we follow these paper girls for the king who are basically young girls forced to sleep with the king and the first book definitely dives into the trauma of that and how difficult that is and I feel like the first book is really really amazing. The second book was a bit of a strange book. It had like middle book syndrome which usually I enjoy middle book syndrome but not so much in this. I feel like it kind of meandered a bit but I feel like the story is really gonna come to a head in the last book. We've been waiting so long because it's been pushed back and I'm just so excited. It's one of my favorite worlds. I feel like Natasha Yang's writing is so like 
beautifully vivid and gorgeous and emotive and captivating and it's like just like these queer girls like falling in love and like fighting against depression and I just I just love it and I'm just so excited but I'm also I've been putting it off I almost read it a couple of weeks ago and then I didn't because I was Scared. like I feel like it needs to be the perfect moment oh I just can't wait I just can't wait this series feels so nostalgic to me it feels like so I remember I read the first book I bought it in Florida when I was on holiday there like many years ago like in 2019 and I read it there um it was like the first book I picked up I remember like I picked up loads of books I'd really been anticipating and that one was kind of one I picked up on a whim but I read it and I have like memories of like reading it by the pool and just being so captivated in this world and so this this world really feels very nostalgic nostalgic to me so I, I'm gonna be sad I think also to let this world go so that's why I've been putting off a little bit then I'm gonna finish the Strange Dreamer duology by Lainey Taylor this one is is it falls prey to when I read this probably I think in 2020 I said I need to read Mrs. Nightmares immediately the ending I need I need to read Mrs. Nightmares immediately and then I've put it off and so I, I really want to get better at not only finishing now the series that have been on my TBR for a long time but now whenever I start a series being quite intense intentional once I've read the first one and enjoyed it of like reading the next ones fairly quickly that's not happening so in this we're following Laszlo Strange who has this like he's obsessed with the mythical lost city of Weep but then it turns out the city isn't lost and he gets to go there and it's this magical world and there's gods and it's all very interesting and this for me is my definitely preferred Lainey Taylor series I, I loved this one I wept like I, I cried like a fucking baby I cried so much reading Strange Dreamer oh my god the ending of this even though you know it's coming you just like hope it's oh they're my they're the they're the endings that get me the most when you have hope but you know the hope is misplaced and delusional but you can't help it i i just need to read it i need to read it so what i'm actually going to do is i think i'm going to read i'm going to finish off a bigger series and then i'm going to do a vlog where i read a couple of duologies and finish off the second books in them um because it's kind of something that takes off a lot of series in one go and i i think this will be one of them because i'm very excited to finish it then we have the green hollow duology by emily tesh which are very short like how have i not read this book yet how, it, like, it, it's literally 100 pages i think i read this towards the end of 2020 and guess what yep haven't finished it <laughs> This is like this magical story about these like beings in the forest and it's hard to explain because you don't want to spoil anything but it's very magical, it's queer, it's lovely, it's dark also, I really like the darkness. I Something about this cover I absolutely love, I love the ominousness of it, I love the drawing of this like abandoned cathedral, I just find it really like captivating I don't know but yeah I mean this one's easy because it's literally one more book and it's like a hundred and something pages maybe when I'm doing like a readathon or something like that this is really useful to stick in there if I get a prompt that works for it then we have the Song of Race and Ruin series by Roseanne A. Brown I again this is a duology and I have a sum of storms and silence to read this is like a very vivid African inspired fantasy and very much inspired by folklore where we have these two characters who want to kill each other at the start and who have very interesting backstories one is a princess in this in this town and I really love I find fantasy around like monarchies very nostalgic again it has that kind of nostalgic YA feeling which I really love and so again this is on the list because it's a duology like imagine oh my god imagine when I do that video finishing three duologies how much satisfaction I'm gonna feel like sometimes when I need a mood boost I go and I count how many series I've got on the go and I'm so proud of myself I would like to defend myself but sadly that's the truth I feel like I'm doing really well at it and it's, it's making me really appreciate like carrying on series I've really been doing myself a disservice from the beauty of series which is like getting to know these characters and, and getting to love them I've really been like cheating myself out of that so I'm intrigued to see where this is gonna go the writing is very beautiful they're action-packed there's magic there's romance they're very vivid so yes really excited to tick this one off and then we have the Raven astrology by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page I have the monarchs to read and then I'll finish the series I actually read this when did I read this <laughs> towards the end of last year 
I think so anyway. And I was super surprised by my reaction to the Ravens was. I really loved it. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it that much, but it felt like just a very well plotted book. It's about this sorority of witches basically at this college and we have like a newbie perspective and then we have a perspective from one of the older girls in sorority and it's like action packed. It's got amazing magic. It's got this sisterhood. It's got great characters, great character development. And I honestly, I can't predict where this one is going to go. Like it really could go so many directions. Every sisterhood has its secrets. Oh my god, I don't know if I can handle any secrets. I'm, oh, I'm really, really excited to see where it's gonna go. So yeah, I feel like this will be probably another one of the eulogies I finished off in that video that I'm talking about. So there we have it. That is the 10 series that I definitely absolutely have to finish this year. No choice. No choice in the matter. I really believe I am gonna finish them all. I have good feelings about them all. Please let me know what you thought of any of these series because it's definitely gonna determine what I pick up next. Particularly tell me if you finish any of them and kind of what you thought of the resolution and the journey that the characters went on um because yeah I definitely need help figuring out what order I'm gonna read them all in but thank you guys so much for watching if you've gotten to the end comment a butterfly emoji there's a lot of butterflies on the monarch so comment a butterfly emoji down below if you've gotten to the end thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you very soon in another one bye